So we are going to have a quick recap of what we just uh, learnt about mitosis. So uh, once a cell enters into mitosis, uh, the diploid cell with four chromosomes, so four pairs of chromosomes. So you can see here the two whites are the homologs of each other, uh, two greens are homologs and uh, yellow and so on. Uh, each uh, chromosome is already duplicated. This happened in S phase of cell cycle. Uh, so you have these the sister chromatids. These two are sister chromatids. Similarly, these two are sister chromatids. So these sister chromatids, they are held together by very specialized proteins which are called cohesins. And all of this uh, duplication of genome took place in, uh, in the S phase of cell cycle. Now, they start appearing in this uh, particular form after only condensation of chromosomes in the beginning of uh, prophase. Now, in prophase, what happens, uh, we can visually see the chromosomes. Uh, we can see the uh, centrosome uh, duplicating and the two centrioles, they start moving uh, towards opposite poles and the cytoskeleton uh, in the form of microtubules, they start emerging, extending from these two products of centrosomes. These uh, spindle fibers are called, uh, uh, these microtubules are called spindle operators. And in the, this phase of prophase, all the chromosomes, they come and they get attached to the microtubules. Now the uh, point on chromosomes where a microtubule attaches physically is called kinetochore and the next next stage is now once they are aligned on the spindle apparatus all of these chromosomes they have to come on the middle of the spindle apparatus like here uh, and when all the chromosomes they get aligned on the mid equatorial plate of spindle apparatus uh, that is the metaphase stage uh, and this is uh, this is also a very important checkpoint in cell division. Cell ensures that I have all the chromosomes on the mid equatorial plate. Once you have all the chromosomes on mid equatorial plate, what happens next is now these microtubules they start uh, retracting. They start you know going in the like pulling, and this pull uh, with the help of a protein which is called separase. Separase is the protein or enzyme which separates or destroys the cohesins which are holding the sister chromatids together. So due to action of separase and then also retraction of microtubules, what we see in the next phase is that the two sister chromatids, they actually start moving towards opposite poles and the movement towards the opposite pole results in, you know, uh, division of these sister chromatids equally and this is the phase when uh, chromosomes they start moving towards opposite pole is called anaphase and eventually when they arrive at the opposite poles uh, we start seeing nuclear membrane coming back you can see just like the uh, mother cell which had uh, four pairs of chromosomes here you can see now four pairs of chromosomes, chromosome pair 1, chromosome pair 2, 3 and 4 and reappearance of uh, nuclear membrane. This phase is called telophase and telophase uh, correlates with you know this constriction of cell membrane in animals, uh, animal cells and this constriction, uh, uh, this phase is called cytokinesis and eventually we have two cells which are exactly identical to the mother cell in terms of their chromosome number. If you remember the uh, first part of this video, the mother cell was looking like this. Okay? And you have the nuclear membrane as well. This is all about mitosis. Soon I'm going to 
tell you why we need to study mitosis there and how we study mitosis. So two identical cells, four pair of chromosomes. So these, these are duplicated chromosomes in the S phase. These are after, you know, cell division, those duplicated uh, chromosomes, the sister chromatids, they are actually independent uh, chromosomes now. So two identical cells coming from uh, a mother cell, a diploid cell leads to uh, production of two diploid cells. Now, if we just for a quick reference, uh, we see how meiosis looks like. Uh, so what will happen in case of meiosis? So we'll have, uh, and in meiosis, I'm not going to go into detail. It will be very quick. Uh, so you will have these, you know, four pairs of chromosomes. Meiosis actually happens in two different phases. We say meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, uh, we have uh, reduction of total number of chromosomes. The homologs, they move to opposite poles. Uh, meiosis 1 is also called the reductional division. So what happens, just like these uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, so in meiosis 1, what is going to happen, you are going to have production of two cells and in those two cells what has happened actually this is one pair of homologs These are sister chromatids, just like here. Now, in meiosis one, uh, what happens after uh, chromosomes they come onto mid equatorial plate? That there's no uh, separation of the sister chromatids. Rather, what happens is uh, homologs they move to opposite poles. In meiosis, what will happen, this complete pair will move to this side and this will move to this side. So what has happened, a complete chromosome and its homolog, they have moved to opposite poles. So end result is, we have now two cells. We have two cells after meiosis one, we have two cells with half the number of chromosomes. So look, here you had two homologs, one and two. Here only one is present. So after meiosis one, after completion of meiosis one, you have two cells with half the number of chromosomes because homologs, they move to the opposite poles. Now this was the result of meiosis one, which I also call reductional division. Now, these cell cells, each of this cell, will now go through normal mitosis, which is this normal mitosis, okay, where when this cell is going to divide, the when cell in the meiosis two, now this is meiosis two. In the first phase, the homologs move to opposite poles and we have, due to reduction or due to movement of homologs to opposite poles from the, uh, uh, at the metaphase, to, uh, in the anaphase, the end result is, at the end of meiosis 1, the phase, we have two cells with half the number of chromosomes than the mother cells. In meiosis 2 phase, each of this cell undergo normal mitosis and 
Normal mitosis means the two sister chromatids, they will be pulled apart to opposite poles and what happens, we have now production of four cell, one divides into two, each cell divides into two cells after cell division and due to normal mitosis where the sister chromatids at anaphase stage in meiosis 2 will be separated and end result will be now will have So each cell will look like this. How many chromosomes are there? One, two, three, four. How many chromosomes were in the mother cell? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four pairs of chromosomes in the mother cell, the diploid cell. The ultimate product of meiosis is with just four chromosomes, one, two, three, four. And that's why we call it haploid because it contains half the number of chromosomes. So it does not contain the homologs that, like here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here the two N is eight, four pairs of chromosomes, and they are reduced after meiosis to Four. Now, why it is important to study mitosis and meiosis? Because, you know, if we don't understand this whole process, we won't be able to understand how, for example, diseases like cancer happens. How, you know, because cancer is all about uh, uncontrolled proliferation. This cell, which is, which is uh, this is at the terminal differentiation stage, this is not going to divide, but if it starts dividing, it enters into S phase, it starts, you know, division, we need to know the mitosis. We need to know the patterns of cell division in, in, uh, in cancer cell. Also, um, we, as a student of science, we should understand how we develop ourselves. Like in the previous part, I said, you know, we start from single cell and through consecutive mitosis, successive mitotic divisions, from single cell, we end up having trillions of cells in our body, uh, let alone the cell pro processes or the stages of cell fate determination and uh, epigenetic inheritance, how the fate of cell is maintained, but how single cell leads to, you know, generation of trillions of cells which are identical in number of chromosomes, the uh, the set of genes which are present on, on, on those chromosomes. So that's why it's very important to understand or study mitosis and meiosis in detail. Why meiosis is important? Because, you know, um, there are disorders like, for example, Down syndrome. It's a chromosome 21 trisomy. Uh, this is a defect at this particular stage where, you know, instead of two homologs, they're going to opposite cells. Imagine these two homologs. So the green ones, imagine all the three, all white, uh, this orange and yellow, they very, very successfully went to opposite pole. But imagine the green one ended up here. Imagine this cell inherited the two, both the homologs, and this one failed in normal, in, in, a, in a meiosis. Now, the end result will be of such a meiosis, you know, you, you lack, this cell lacks the, this chromosome, the green one. And this cell will carry all the normal numbers, the white, the orange one, yellow one, but it will contain two copies of green ones. And since this could be a, a, a spermatocyte or oocyte, imagine this becomes fertilized. So the chrome, this could be the chromosome 21. 
So after fertilization, let's say sperm contributes one copy and this is the oocyte. You have three copies of chromosome 21. This is what happens because the gene dosage becomes more. So it's very important and this concept is called chromosome non-disjunction. So this concept is very important uh, for, you know, understanding human alleles or human disorders. So we have to understand the fundamentals and basics. So when we perform uh, mitosis in the lab, the question is at your level, in, at bio 100, at freshman level, I always advise my students to think creatively, to think very systematically when you design an experiment. So whenever you design an experiment, always keep record of every little thing you do in the lab. So you, you, you know, have your lab notebook, you write down the experiment, for example, uh, experiment is visualization of stages of mitosis. Imagine we want to visualize and we want to learn about di different stages of mitosis. We want to, you know, learn. Now the question is, this is our objective or this is our experiment. We have to think about where we can do this. There are many different cell types we can do. For example, uh, taking human cells, same experiment can be done. We can take, you know, uh, plant cells. Uh, but remember how many uh, so we want, when we say we want to visualize different stages of mitosis, it means definitely we need a microscope. Uh, we can't go inside a cell with a naked eye. These are microscopic structures. We need to think what kind of cells we should use where we see, you know, tens of hundreds of cells in different stages of mitosis. So, thinking Creatively, you will think about, yeah, you know, I should be using a tissue or, or you know, a cell type which is in a continuous cell cycle, rapidly dividing. Because when it is rapidly dividing, that is where I have the chance to find different stages of mitosis. So in the lab, uh, what we do, we use, so we, we need to think about what we do. So what we do next, we write about what is... Uh, the list of materials we may need because we won't be able to see different stages of mitosis we need to visualize chromosomes and if you have an actively dividing cell uh, you need to use some dyes to stain chromosomes or DNA so that you can you know uh, visualize once you look under a microscope a compound microscope you know, it's uh, different stages are visible because you can see chromosomes on spindle fibers. So, first thing which we need is we need uh, a system in which we have actively dividing cells. What we do, we take uh, onion root tips because you know. You can. It, it's very simple. You just put onion uh, in, in a in a beaker in such a way that you know its bottom, the where the roots are, it touches uh, the water, and in one or two days it will start you know sprouting roots, and once you will have, you know, uh, so the setup looks like this. You have with toothpicks, onion is held in such a way. And here are the roots. In few days.